Welcome everybody once again to Ashonda at Large, where we discuss faith, family, and the future of our community. I want to thank you so much for tuning in once again today, y'all. We got some very important things to cover today, but before we do, I want to invite you all to like as well as to subscribe if you have not already done so. And don't forget to hit that notification bell on your right so that you can get my latest updates as they come out. Y'all, we have been trying for a very long time to wake our people up to the reality of who we are. But there's no one like the most high in all the earth to be able to do what he does best. And that is to open up the eyes of the unbelievers. And if you have eyes to see and ears to hear, then today this message is for you because we are going to dig into what is going on in the culture today concerning Donald Trump and us the so-called African-Americans, the true Israelites. I'm going to go ahead and read an article that I found concerning the 1619 Project and his threat to defund schools that will promote and teach this in their history classes. Trump threatens to yank funding from schools that teach the 1619 Project. It reads, President Donald Trump has launched another assault against education intending to address racism in America. On Sunday morning, Trump tweeted that the Department of Education was investigating whether California public schools had impl implemented the New York Times 1619 project into their curriculum. The Pulitzer Prize winning initiative aims to reframe American history around the year slaves landed on its shores and by placing the consequences of slavery and the contributions of black Americans at the very center of our national narrative. Department of Education is looking at this. If so, they will not be funded. Trump wrote, sharing a September 1st tweet from an unverified account stating that California schools were using the curriculum. It follows a White House memo released on Friday and obtained by the Washington Post that ordered federal agencies to discontinue racial sensitivity training. The Trump administration claimed the training sessions were divisive, anti-American propaganda, and that trainings that mention white privilege or suggest that racism is part of the nation's foundation undercut the government's core values. All agencies were directed to cancel any training related to white privilege or critical race theory, a school of thought which views race as a social construct that is used by white people to perpetuate institutional racism at the expense of people of color. It's unclear how much of this training was conducted at federal agencies. The memo was issued days after a guest on Fox News, Tucker Carlson Tonight, bashed critical race theory and called for its removal from federal government institutions. Similarly, while some schools have moved to incorporate the 1619 Project into classes, the extent is not known. The curriculum is available for free online. On Sunday, historian Nicole Hemmer, who authored a book about right-wing media's role in transforming American politics, weighed in on Trump's directives in an interview with CNN's Brian Stelter. I don't think any of us believe that the president has deep thoughts about critical race theory or that he reads the 1619 Project or that he's read the 1619 Project, she said. These have really become watchwords for what the right sees as anti-white racism. Trump's allies have also attacked teaching a version of history that is not flattering to the U.S. Earlier this year, Arkansas Senator Tom Cotton introduced the Saving American History Act of 2020, legislation that will prohibit the use of federal funds to teach the 1619 Project. He said the project was a racially divisive, revisionist account of history that denies the noble principles of freedom and equality on which our nation was founded. Trump has claimed systemic racism is not a problem in America. Trump's comments come in the middle of a nationwide reckoning on race, sparked by protest against racism and police violence. Now, y'all, I am just floored 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 at what I just read. I am so floored. I've read actually several articles, but this one I felt like really highlighted what it means to be going through the experience of a, as a so-called black man or woman in America and the rejection and the denial of our historical contributions our what we have as a people our ancestors have contributed to the foundation the very foundation of that nation that we all know today as the united states of america it's so interesting to me when they talk about this so-called revisionist history when we have been just 
told, force fed from the time we were young about this Christopher Columbus guy who just happened to discover America and the whole Thanksgiving operation of these great pilgrims who work together with the indigenous people so that they can all fellowship and praise God that they had food. All of this revisionist nonsense, the whitewashing of the natives and making them these $5 Indians, all of this they cannot see is revisionist history and literally taking every contribution aside from maybe uh, a few people like uh, George Washington Carver or Harriet Tubman or Frederick Douglass, but the majority of our intellectual inventors and our philosophers and our artists and literally muzzling them down, putting them underneath the ground and acting as though they made no real contribution to any of American society in doing so while they were slaves, many of them, and they had the nerve to talk about revisionist history. And y'all, I could go on and on and on about the flagrant stupidity and arrogance and hypocrisy of what I just heard concerning these politicians talking about preserving American history. But that's not what I'm going to do. You can go ahead and go on someone else's channel for that, because on this channel, we deal with the real history of who our people are, the reality that we are the true bloodline Israelites. And that, my friends, is what is being covered up. Y'all, the reality is, and I've been saying it for such a long time. I've had this platform for two years and I started out with the reality that Donald Trump is a pharaoh. He is the rebirth of a pharaoh as America is the rebirth of Egypt. You need scripture on that, then you can find that in Deuteronomy chapter 28, particularly verse 68. Verse 68, where it talks about the fact that the true Israelites were going to go on ships and they would go to Egypt again and be sold as bondmen and bondwomen and that they would not get deliverance from this, save Yah. Nobody would buy them out of the slavery. No Marcus Garvey, no Malcolm X, no Martin Luther King Jr. No one would be able to save them, our people, out of this bondage, save the Most High Yah and Him alone. And what are we seeing? We are seeing that as 400 years has occurred from 1619 to 2019 has ended, we are seeing the hand of Pharaoh doing exactly what his predecessor did in the first Egypt. He is holding the truth. He is stubborn in all his ways. He is denying who we are. And of course, there are many people who worship that antichrist Pharaoh spirit of Donald Trump's that will agree with him. But let's see what the scripture says in Genesis 15, verse 13 through 14. And he said unto Abram, know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs and shall serve them and they shall afflict them 400 years and also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge and afterwards shall they come out with great substance. Now I don't know about you unless you've been living under a rock but it seems that ever since this year has gotten its kicks going that there's been nothing but steady judgment on this nation called the United States of America. Whether it is through COVID-19, whether it is through the fires in California, whether it is through hurricanes, whether it is through famine that is impending, people's houses being taken from them, all manner of calamity happening one blow after the other in the nation in which all people's eyes are on is the nation of the United States. Why? Oh, why, my friend? Because they are the fulfillment of this scripture. Now, we have people in the urban apologist community, namely people like Vocab Malone and Faithful to God and Nefernity that have told us that we are crazy, we are heretical, we are out of our minds to believe that we are the fulfillment of the Israelite prophecies. And they tell us particularly surrounding the 400 years and mock ministers like Tao Ministries and Dante Fortson and say, you all are so crazy. But isn't it interesting? Isn't it rather interesting that today we are hearing the story about how Donald Trump is literally threatening to cut off funding to school 
schools who are going to repaint the picture of America more accurately to what it was versus what has been told us all our lives. 1619 Project, isn't it interesting that the focus is on what? 400 years, 400 years of brutality, 400 years of oppression, 400 years of ignoring our people, 400 years of treating us as though we don't even exist, as though we are the scum of the earth. Sounds a lot like what scripture said we would be treated like, but you have these charlatans who call themselves urban apologists who are standing there and saying that we are not legitimate in talking about this 400 years. Why? Because we have not exodus out of this nation yet. Oh, my friend, be certain for sure that we will be leaving this Egyptian captivity, but just like the first Pharaoh and how the Most High had to harden his heart, we are seeing the Most High harden the heart of that one Donald Trump who is the manifestation of Pharaoh once again. And oh, what do we have? We have the religious right who wants to exalt Donald Trump as though he's God's man. He is the rebirth of King Cyrus, according to the Ashkenazi Jews. This is what they paint him as, literally giving him a coin, saying that he is the rebirth of King Cyrus and it's the sons of light going to war against the sons of darkness, y'all. We better wake up and understand because the sons of darkness are coming against the true sons of light, the sons of light being the true Israelites and those Gentiles who have cleaved unto the true house of Israel. Y'all, we need to understand that this is a spiritual war that we are up against. And I ask you, my friends, I ask the urban apologists why it is that they have not talked about the allegiance of Donald Trump with the Jewish people concerning the Noahide laws, concerning those laws, those seven laws that they say are the laws of Noah that come out of Talmud worship rather than Torah. These laws that say that if you worship in God other than what they tell you is God that your head will be cut off and that if you name the name of Yahusha Hamasiach Jesus Christ is the most high Lord and Savior that your head will be cut off y'all I'm telling you this thing is deep I'm telling you we need to open up our eyes and understand that prophecy is literally being fulfilled prophecy is being fulfilled right where you stand take one step prophecy is being fulfilled take a second step prophecy is being fulfilled all around you you better open up your eyes those who have eyes to see and ears to hear what the spirit of the most high Yah is saying unto his people in this day and time. Wake up dry bones. Understand who you are. Understand that the enemy can no longer keep his foot upon our necks. Why? Because we can breathe. We are the dry bones of Ezekiel's vision and we were to prophesy unto those dry bones. Breathe again. Why? Because the Pharaoh system is coming down and those who want to adopt to the Pharaoh system will come down with it. I hope y'all hear me up and hear what I'm talking. The 1619 project is another fulfillment of that prophetic vision that is happening among the people of the Most High Yah throughout the diaspora. Open up your eyes, Judah, for your Savior is coming. Oh, I'm telling y'all, y'all, I'm so excited today. I'm so excited when I see that the Most High is working in the earth in the way that he is exposing these wicked people for who they are. So I tell you right now that if you are hearing this message and you call yourself a Christian and you are of Gentile descent or you are of Israelite descent and you want to deny that, I tell you right now, choose this day whom you will serve. Will you serve the Most High Yah or will you serve the gods of this world? Because the gods of this world are crumbling all around you. All of this racial divisiveness, all of these things that you see are a manifestation of the things to come because nation shall rise against nation. That is ethnicity against ethnicity. I tell you, prophecy is being fulfilled right before your eyes. Yes, it's surrounding 400 years and know for surety that we will be delivered and come out with great substance. This is why it is that we are hearing the call for reparations. I tell you, my friend, do not be deceived by these so-called urban apologists or John MacArthur or these people in that former dispensation who deny the living and true Hamashiach, that burnt brown Negro Israelite savior who is a lion of the tribe of Judah. Do not be deceived by these heretics. Do not be deceived by these politicians understand who you are understand who he is and draw near unto him in this day and this time I'm going to go ahead and close y'all I'm excited and I hope you are too and I want to know what you think in the comments section below because this this is prophecy being fulfilled even as we speak y'all so let me know what you think in the comments section below regarding the 1619 the defunding of these schools who are going to tell it like it is who we are we are the people of the most high y'all let it be said amen and amen thank you so much for tuning in to us Shonda at large where we discuss faith, family, and the future of our community. As always, y'all, love yourself without hating your enemies. And until next time, y'all bless and salamah.